The question this morning is, is English football truly ready to in reintroduce standing at games again? I noticed this last night. In fact, I mentioned it when I was on Sky Sports News. Manchester City become the latest Premier League club after Wolves, Tottenham, Manchester United to prepare their stadiums for a future rule change on safe standing. Celtic have trialled this as they well and it's been very successful. Retractable stands, yeah. So what are Manchester City going to do? Manchester City are going to install 5,620 rail seats this summer to coach enhance supporter safety at the Etihad. They can be folded away of these seats to create a safe standing area and installed in the lower tier of the South Stand so that as and when the time comes, thumbs up to safe standing, City can implement what they have done, what they've put into place. Are you for this, against it? Absolutely for it. You're for it? Absolutely. All right, on the grounds of? On the grounds of, I think, that the Taylor report that was commissioned 30 years ago had flaws attached to it. I think there's many dynamics about dynamic movement inside stadiums, and I also think that football fans should have a, a part in the ground to watch it how they want. It shouldn't be price-led, but I do think that the movement towards 10% of stadiums providing standing as part of the facilitation of a reignition, reignition of how people see football is absolutely fundamental. Well, Simon, that'll be music to the ears of this man because for 10 years, uh, Pete Dakin of the Football Supporters Association and Safe Standing campaigner, he has been very much saying what you have just said. 10 years, a decade of campaigning. Pete, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Great. Good to speak to you. And I can see you as well. And I can see, ironically, you're standing, whatever you're broadcasting to us from this morning. <laughs> is, is, there, is there a cute irony in that, Pete? It wasn't intentional. It's to stop me getting fat. But uh, it's definitely <laughs> a, a beautiful irony, as you pointed out. <laughs> so, listen, you, you have dedicated uh, 10 years of your life to getting behind this. This is something you feel very passionate about. Why are you so behind Safe Standing? Well, it's it's not just me. I mean, ever since the Taylor report that Simon mentioned, the, the first version of which came out in April 1989, football supporters or a certain group of football supporters have never accepted that standing can't be safe. Um, and indeed, throughout that entire period in the UK, we've had safe standing. We've had licensed standing at football grounds and it's been perfectly safe. We just haven't had it in the top two tiers of English football. Um, we felt at the time that it was a political decision that was more about changing the makeup of football fans that went to games. And there were some very good reasons for that, by the way. Um, hooliganism and violence in the 70s and 80s, it was a completely different game then. People weren't investing in football stadia in the way that they are now. You know, we're not saying that it wasn't right at the time or it hasn't delivered some benefits to the game. Um, but basically in 2021, the whole process is completely outdated. There are really safe technologies that just weren't available in 1989, such as the ones that Man City are talking about putting in um, into their ground, uh, such as the ones that have been successfully trialled at Wolves that you know Manchester United are talking about, technologies at Spurs nowadays. These are modern stadia that are fantastically safe and that give people the choice that Simon talks about. You know, if if we've learned anything from the last year and having to watch football throughout the pandemic, it's the absolutely vital role that football fans play um, in creating the whole atmosphere that the, the game falls off. Uh, uh, Pete, that you speak to fans all the time. I know this man beside me certainly does. Do you feel there's a growing appetite for this? Yeah, absolutely. I think the... Uh, the I think, you know, it's been really interesting in the last decade to look at the growing uh, movement amongst football supporters to increase atmospheres and grounds, um, you know, based a lot on the ultras um, movements in Europe. Uh, younger fans coming into the game now are seeing a version of the game that is much more sanitised than the football that, you know, the, the the likes of us older people grew up watching. You know, the atmospheres of the um, the 70s, 80s and early 90s just, just aren't the same. And I think there's been a definite backlash from that. And you've seen it in the, you know, the flags that people have brought to the games. You've seen it in the older groups and the younger people trying to come, come together to form atmosphere groups. 
Um, and also, you know, there's all kinds of other reasons why people want to stand to watch football. So, you know, sometimes people come from out of town, people who aren't there all the time. You want to stand with a different group of people. The, the problem with seating is you've got to sit in the same seats and there's not very much space to move around. You know, standing can be much more flexible. Um, there are all kinds of reasons why people want to do it. And the appetite is is very definitely there. Having said, well, Pete, you say that only four clubs in the Premier League are pushing for it so far. City are joining Wolves, Tottenham and Manchester United. But that's it, the four. Yeah, that's four ahead of the legislation changing to allow it, by the way. It's a brave move for a football club to invest huge amounts of money in remodelling a stand before it's actually legally allowed. So I think actually in that context, that's an amazing vindication of the demand for this thing. You're nodding. You oh, agree no, with that? No, he's absolutely right. And the irony of the safety is that there's, there's always been questions over the years about something called dynamic movement, which is when fans stand up when a goal is celebrated uh, inside stadiums that's been all seating, which cause structural damage inside stadiums, which was in part a safety issue that the Taylor report was trying to uh, obviate or circumnavigate because of the challenges previously. Also, the policing inside all-seater stadiums has become more difficult to get in between seats and be able to deal with contentious issues. Look, I, I, I think people in the modern day of football, with all the things that have just been laid out, should have the ability to watch a football game how they choose. It shouldn't be price-led. We can't make this about a price choice that people suddenly choose to stand because there's a price break on standing rather than there is on, seat, on, sit, on seating. But I do believe that part of the atmosphere of football and part of the tradition of football is people being together. The irony of this bloody situation now is we're in a situation where social distance, distancing is at the front of everybody's mind and here comes the, the opportunity to perhaps get it through. But I'm entirely behind this. I think it's fundamentally right. Mm. And, I, and I really hope and expect the majority of the elite football clubs to want to do it as well. Where do you think it's going to go, Pete? Give, give us a rough idea. I mean, you are the greatest living expert on this, mate. You've been, you've been engrossed in it for 10 years. Where, where's it going to go from here? So in surveys that the Football Supporters Association and other people have done, we reckon that the, uh, the, the latent demand for standing at most large clubs is somewhere in the region of 10 to 15%. Um, so, you know, the vast majority of football fans don't want to stand, they want to sit down, but there's a, uh, a small and significant minor, uh, in majority that does. Um, I would be hugely surprised if in a few years' time we didn't see all of the clubs in the Premier League having offering some kind of standing accommodation for those fans that, uh, that want it. Totally agree with Simon, it's not necessarily about pricing, it's up for clubs to talk to their fans on a local level to decide what pricing is relevant and appropriate for them. Um, but I think the the option will be there. And that's all we've ever really asked for. We've all said, look, people people want to watch football in different ways. Give them the choice. Let them decide. And that's better for everybody because one of the problems with the current situation, particularly at away games, is people standing in front of other people that either can't or don't want to stand themselves. And this whole situation now removes that whole customer care problem. People who want to sit can go and sit in the seats. People who want to stand can go and stand in the standing areas. Uh, it's such a simple and obvious and easy solution. It's definitely safe. It's easy to police. We can do it. It's an absolute no-brainer. It'll be all over the game in two or three years' time, I'm sure. Pete Dakin, thank you so much. Uh, Pete, I'm watching you on this uh, screen in front of me. You can sit down now, mate. <laughs> what a good man he is much appreciated Pete Dakin saying uh, safe standing is on the way so is the 11 o'clock bulletin